Now, Dr. Justus Afostad is a specialist surgeon with the focus in breast, thyroid and parathyroid health. He joins us in light of Breast Cancer Awareness Month to chat about, of course, the significance of information and early detection. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you very much for inviting me for this one. It's a great pleasure to be here and welcome to all the listeners and viewers. Yes, absolutely, a very warm welcome. And we're speaking on something that October is all about, which is of course, breast cancer awareness. Now, what are some of the misconceptions that go along with this disease? One of the most common misconceptions, I can't get it because it's not in my family. Mm. Most of the patients that we are seeing actually do not have a family history. This is one important thing. Wow, so it doesn't necessarily only have to be hereditary. Exactly, only about one in every 20 breast cancers is familial. And we're working hard on this. We have been at the forefront of elucidating the genetic causes for breast cancer and we can now test not only for breast cancer genes one and two, but for an array of up to 24 even more genes that we can completely sequence. That being said, the vast majority of breast cancers that we are seeing are actually lifestyle-induced breast cancers. Wow. So as much as it is important and something to take note of to know family history, but also lifestyle and what you do on the daily is as important. Absolutely. Wow. There are things that you can influence and things that you can't influence. For example, you cannot influence or we wouldn't want you to influence mm. your lifestyle choice of having children later in life and having less children than before. And we see that from the generations of our parents. Mm. Women have less children, want to make a career, and by all means, they should. Yes. But this also increases the risk of breast cancer. The more important factors, however, are the ones that you can change. Okay. And what we are seeing these days is what is called an avalanche of obesity mm. and from an ideal weight to when you're massively obese, mm. your breast cancer risk increases by more than 50%. Wow. And this is a factor that you can clearly influence. Conversely, we exercise less. We're sitting on couches like here. Yeah. <laughs> and on chairs. Yes. But if we were to get off these. And be four, active more. Four hours of exercise per week and strenuous exercise mm, mm. means that your breast cancer risk decreases by about a third. That is, I think that that is so key. And how does South Africa look in the spectrum of things? I mean, how many people are being diagnosed with cancer and of course with breast cancer specifically, and how many people are seeking that treatment? We see that uh, in South Africa, there are no reliable acute statistics. There's the Cancer Association, but I think, and we have very good reasons to believe that it's actually underreported. And the new cases of breast cancer are, we estimate, somewhere between 10 and 15,000 per year. Imagine this, this is a small city wow. of women that are suffering from breast cancer. We have demonstrated through our work in the public sector as well as in the private sector, if you're diagnosed early mm. at a stage where you cannot yet feel a lump, where we can only see it on imaging, mm. that the survival is that of a normal woman. Whereas if you wait until the breast is swollen up and you can feel lumps under your arm, the survival is much worse. And your chances of surviving for the next five years are only even with best treatment, about one in two. Mm. So early detection is a major important thing. Mm. If you feel a lump in your breast, mm. don't wait, don't hesitate. Act, act, go, act. Act, go and see the doctor, go and see the day hospital and insist on referral to a specialist service. Or mm. alternatively, if there is, for example, the pulling in of the skin in a certain part of the nipple an eczema type of reaction on the nipple, that there's no good explanation for, mm. then you could sh uh, should go and see the doctor. If you have a medical aid, most medical aids now accept that every year you should go, or every other year you should go oh, for fresh. mammographic screening, and there you should see to it that you go to a breast specialist service that does little else. 
Okay, but doctor, you seem to be adding quite a lot of emphasis on women having breast cancer. But I remember last week on the show, or a few weeks ago on the show, we had, of course, a male survivor of breast cancer. How prominent or, or evident is breast cancer in male compared to in women? Breast cancer in males is not a health problem. And I'm sad to have to say this to the women out, uh, to the men out there, you don't matter. Because we are much rather look after the women. And to put it into perspective, mm. for every 100 women that I see with breast cancer, we see one man. Yeah, Only those, those one are man. scary stats. So we are a society that's fixed on men, mm -hmm. but instead we should fix on the beauty and the health of our women. Mm. And for women, it's a much bigger health mm. problem than for men. Because breast cancer, due to the fact that we have a relatively young society, mm. strikes women at a young age, we see that about one in every six breast cancers occurs before age 40. That is unusual in the world. And at this age, mm. women are often breadwinners in the family. Yes. They are caregivers. They are supporters for their children. Mm -hmm. And we should focus on keeping them healthy. Of course. Keeping them in their supportive role. Roles. Mm. Keeping their beauty. So, Dr. In essence, we want to just, you know, ensure that everyone is healthy, everyone is taken care of, and everyone knows where they stand in terms of breast cancer. So you've already mentioned that there's um, weird eczema that you can find around the mm. nipple. There's a lump under the armpit on the actual breast itself. How else can people find out if, if they're safe, if they're healthy, and, and how does early detection go about? There are two ways, physical examination that you must do yourself because you yourself know your breast much better than I as a healthcare uh, practitioner. And you should feel your breast for lumps, okay. look at your breast, whether there's any skin, uh, is any skin dimpling mm. or other signs that you're not familiar with. For the lumps, young women like you get yes. lumps in their breasts and you should, you are allowed to wait until your next menstrual cycle is done. Okay. But if the lump is still there, then you must go and see a doctor. Absolutely. Now, for women above 40 years, okay. it has been shown that breast cancer screening by routine mammography is the best way to discover breast cancer early. Okay. There's no other method that has shown to decrease the mortality of breast cancer to such an extent. As a matter of fact, we've run a study in our own mm -hmm. uh, practice where we actually had a look if women wait until a lump is occurring, yes. or if the lump or the cancer is detected at uh, screening, the survival is improved or by about double. Wow. That means that if you have a cancer that's detected at screening, your survival is going to be that as if you didn't have breast cancer at all. Beautiful. You will still require the treatment but you will have a normal survival. I think it's so important for our viewers to know at home that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Whether um, the, the lump is cancerous or not, detection, cure, treatment, and of course, informing yourself, keeping up to scratch with research and knowing what's happening on the ground. Thank you so much, doctor, for stepping in and informing us in such an incredible way. And now we're armed with the tools to go out there and ensure that we're all healthy. Now, after the break, we chat to the regional manager of Reach for Recovery, Carla Lind.